Dark Venture. Presented by Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. Over the minds of mortal men come many shadows. Shadows of greed and hate, jealousy and fear. Darkness is the absence of light. So in the sudden shadows which fog the minds of men and women are to be found the strange impulses which urge them into the unknown. Dark Venture. Tonight's venture in the dark features William Tracy and is brought to you by the Wild Root Company, makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. But first, a word about a close-up that has nothing to do with the movies. Say, men, how do you check on your appearance before you go to work in the morning? You better make a close-up look in the mirror and see if you need Wild Root Cream Oil. You know, Wild Root Cream Oil helps you make a successful impression. It keeps your hair handsomely and trim, relieves dryness, and removes loose dandruff. And there's not a drop of alcohol in Wild Root Cream Oil. What's more, it contains soothing lanolin. And just a little goes a long, long way. So get the big economy-sized bottle at your drug or toilet goods counter. And next time you visit your barber, ask him to use Wild Root Cream Oil on your hair. And now tonight's dark venture, The Only Inhabitant. Come on, come on, you can drop that Chinese. They tell me you can speak English fine. Oh, now I see who you are. Go away. No, you don't. Go away. Look, they tell me you're the wise old grandpa around here. Well, look, grandpa, you're going to tell me what's wrong. You're going to tell me if I have to choke it out of you. What is it you want to know? Here's what I want to know. Why am I poisoned, everybody? You'd think I was one of those guys in the mouthwash ads back in the States. Even my best friends won't tell me. Old Joe said once we get to Harala, everything was going to be Jake. And I sweat my head off getting here and... You've got to tell me what's wrong. All right. I tell you, so you leave us in peace. Come in. So you want the truth, do you? Sure, I want the truth. Why won't this town hide me out? Why won't anybody give me a break? To understand that, young man, you must first understand what has happened to you. Nothing's happened to me. You don't think so? You tell me why you came to this part of the world, then I will explain exactly what has happened to you. Not to that. You're doing the talking, not me. No, my way is the only way I can help you. But listen, I... It is the only way. All right, I'll tell you. Why not? Yeah, maybe just telling it'll make me feel better. Before I got in the army, I was a handy kid back in Ohio. That's in the States. Cleveland, Youngstown, Cincinnati. Hijacking, smuggling stick-ups, anything for a quick buck. And though the cops never nabbed me, the draft board sure did a good job. Yeah, before I could say you can't do this to me, I'm driving a GI truck in Mitkin of China. And one day about a year ago, I was sitting in that dumpy bar room trying to swallow some wormy wine when I feel somebody standing next to me. It was a big guy in a white suit, and he was smiling. If that wine tastes so lousy, why drink it? Yeah. Try some of my scotch, Eddie. Scotch? Hey, how come you know my name? I don't know yours. Mine's Joe Hawkins. A friend of yours who used to work with you back in Ohio told me you were stationed out here. He said look for a tough little redhead with a chip on his shoulder. Yeah? I got a good deal for you, Eddie. There's a car outside, some civilian clothes, and a couple of fake passports. You won't mind resigning from the Army, will you? I don't get it. They tell me you're a real tough lad. I need somebody like that for my racket. Which is what? Oh, dealing with the natives here in China. Black market, huh? I'm offering you a seat in the gravy train, Eddie. You coming along? What happens if we get nabbed? I got an answer for that, too. The best hideout in the whole world. 
You coming along? What do you think, Joe? Joe and I worked all the cities and towns in that part of China, and we really rolled in the shekels. We made a good team. Joe could sure figure things out. And me? Well, like Joe said, in his racket, he needed a real tough lad. There's the gas truck, Joe, behind those trees. Right where you told the driver to park it. Yeah, 3,000 gallons of gas. That's 10 grand in the kitty, little man. Come on. 10 grand less a 1,000 for the driver. Yeah. Hey, where is he? Here he is in the cab. He fell asleep waiting for us. The jerk, he could have been nabbed. Better wake him up so we can pay him off and get out of here. Oh, wait. Huh? Don't you have no consideration, Joe? Don't you know it ain't polite to wake a guy from such a nice sleep? This way's better. <laughs> Gotta hand it to you. How do you do it, kid? What do you feel inside? Help me dump Martin. Let's get out of here. Yeah, uh, 200 cartons of cigarettes, my friend. Just like we promised. Very good. Very good. That'll be $50 a carton. American dough. $50? I beg your pardon. But I was told the price was only $35. Come on, you pay up and stop squawking. I, I pay. I pay. 35 bucks for 10 packs of cigarettes. What do you think this is? Bargain day? It's pretty risky, kid, working a boat like this. What do you mean? Smuggling these guys across. They're Jap collaborators. The money's A1, ain't it? Yeah, but... Hey, hey what's that on the shore? Lights. Chinese soldiers, we're in trouble. Yeah, turn off that motor, quick! Hey, what are we gonna do? Those Japs are all down in the hole, ain't they? Sure. And the hatch is locked? Yeah, they're all locked in, you know that. I'm a pretty good swimmer. How about you? Yeah, okay, but... Then give me that axe, quick, before those Chinese turn a machine gun on us. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Hey, Yeti, you're going nuts. You're scuttling the boat. We can swim to shore easy from here. What about the guys in the hold? Drown like rats. Let's try to turn back. What are you talking about? They've already paid for the trip. Besides, you said they were Jack collaborators, didn't you? What's the matter, Joe? Ain't you patriotic? Yeah, that's how we lived, Joe and I. But we ate good and drank good because we could pay for what we wanted. And we got a kick out of life. Just the same, I was human. And there were times when I got the shakes thinking what would happen if the MPs ever nabbed us. But Joe had an answer for that, and it was always the same. Kid, when the going gets tough, we're going to head for a place called Harala. Harala? What's that? According to the maps, it's just a little native village a million miles from nowhere. But like I told you before, it's the best hideout in the whole world for guys like you and me. Then about three months ago, we were in a mangy little town on the border. We found a room in a little hotel and were sleeping off a hard drunk. It must have been about three in the morning. Oh. Hey, who's there? Military police, open up. Joe! Uh, come on, through the window. Hey, look. Look, there's more of them down there. Where's my gun? Don't be nuts or cut us to pieces. Then what do we do? We open the door like the man says. <laughs> We were in an army transport plane with an MP guard flying back to Mitchell to stand court martial. The sky was cloudy and the plane was cold and I was feeling lousy. But why shouldn't I? Going back to what I faced. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder. Eddie, what do you want? Shut up, keep your voice down. I've been watching that guard. He had to stay awake while we were having our snooze. So what? Look at him. He's so tired he can hardly keep his eyes open. Another one of your big plans keep coming up? Keep your voice down and listen. We can't be more than four or five hundred miles from Harala. There's nobody on the plane but that guard and the pilot. If we work it right, we can take over this plane. What are you talking about? Hey, what are you guys doing over there? Oh, just talking to keep from falling asleep. Yeah, sure makes you drowsy flying this high. Yeah, sure does. Look, look how he's fighting it. Look how he's trying to stay awake. So what if we did take the plane over? A lot of good that would do us. Who'd fly it? Kid, I was flying these things when you were still getting a 2 a.m. feeding. Huh? 
luck. The guard's just about asleep. Start edging toward him. If he sees us, he'll blow our heads off. Just keep edging up on him. That's it. Easy. Easy. He's awake again. Freeze. Look at his head nodding. Come on. How we find our way to this Harala, or whatever it is. Pilot's got maps up there. Don't talk so much. Just keep crawling. The guard's in dreamland. Yeah. Do it quick, Eddie. Do it quick. Was that quick enough, Joe? Give me his gun. Uh, all right. Come on. All right, Mr. Flyer. Set the automatic pilot and throw your hands up. You've just lost your job. Tied the pilot up and put him in back, and Joe took over. For a couple hours, everything was okay. Then towards night, a storm came up. The sky got darker than I ever saw before. Joe started sweating, and I felt myself going to pieces inside. I tried to hide it, but I couldn't. Where are we? Uh, stop bothering me. Why don't you tell me the truth? We're lost. You don't know where we are. It's a storm. I can't see nothing. The compass is all wrong. We're going to crack up. We're gonna die, ain't we, Joe? Hey, what's wrong with you? You're the tough guy, remember? I don't want to die, Joe. I don't want to die. Shut up. Hey, hey the right motor's conking out. Joe, how are we gonna get out of this? You ain't this way with a gun in your hand on the ground, are you, kid? Joe, don't ride me. Get that pilot and bring him up here. Maybe he can help us out. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll get him. And take this pistol with you. If he gets gay... I started back for the pilot. Then I stumbled over something and banged against the side of the plane. I saw what I stumbled against. The parachutes. The parachutes! Joe, Joe, we could bail out! He couldn't hear me. Nuts to him. I fastened one of the parachutes around me. I wasn't gonna die. The plane was losing altitude all the time. I started for the emergency hatch, trying to batter it open. I had to get out of the plane. I had to get out! And I happened to look back for a second. And I saw the pilot was just sitting watching me with a smile on his face. I raised the gun. He didn't smile after that. I got the hatch open and jumped into the darkness. I must have passed out when I hit the ground. I woke up with a storm gone and the sun shining in my face. Just lying on my back looking around at this... Wilderness. It made me sick inside. All alone in the middle of China, that's all I could think. I climbed to my feet. All alone. I felt myself getting panicky. I... Then I saw something that made me think I was going nuts. No, it was real. About 20 feet from me was a pitcher of water and some bread. <laughs> went over to where I saw the bread and water. Footprints in the dirt. I didn't care about eating these footprints. I got followed them. I don't know how long it took, but after a while I was standing on a little hill. And down below, all by itself, was a hut. There didn't seem to be anybody around, but out of the chimney came a trickle of smoke. I took out my gun. I couldn't take chances. I didn't know what I'd find inside that hut. There was no answer to my knock. I pushed it open and held my gun ready. I was just a little bit afraid. At first I couldn't see anything after coming out of the sun. Then I started to make out wooden furniture and a little stove. And then I saw him. Leave me alone. So this is what I've been afraid of. A small, gray-haired little guy in rags sitting in the corner. And as my eyes became more accustomed to the dark, I saw that one of his arms was gone. I told you, leave me alone. You speak English, huh? That's good. What are you supposed to be, the old man of the mountain? For the last time, leave me alone go away. Uh, uh I like it here. You the guy who gave me the bread and water? Yes, I am. And why, why are you so impolite now? I have a reason. Go and leave me alone. And where shall I go? Chicago, St. Louis, maybe? American airplanes fly over here every day. Go back where you were and spread your parachute. One of them will see you. That wouldn't be so good, mister. 
But I tell you, you cannot stay here. Do you know where Harala is? Yes, beyond the mountain. How far? Oh, perhaps 400 miles. Uh, how long would it take me to get there? Oh, about three months on foot, if you knew the way. Do you know the way? Yes, Then but... you're taking me. I cannot. You're taking me. Young man, listen. First, I want you to listen. I'm in trouble, bad trouble. If I'm caught, they'll kill me. You know why they're after me? Because I'm not afraid to do anything I have to do to get what I want. Nobody crosses me, nobody. The toughest guys in the world that tried it, and they didn't get away with it. I don't care what your reasons are, but if you can't take me to Haral, I'll kill you. Now, what were you going to say? Nothing. If I told you the truth, as you say, you'd kill me, and even I am afraid to die. Okay, that's settled then. I'll take you to Haral. Good. Because you're an evil man and must be destroyed. Yeah? And who's going to do it? A one-armed little guy like you? Yes, me. You may have had your way with everyone else you've met, but on the road to Halala, I, the weakest man who ever crossed your path, will destroy you. We'll return to our story as soon as Harry Wallstrom has a word with the men. Recently, a leading independent research organization set out to find what men from coast to coast really want when it comes to good grooming. The handsome grooming that helps bring success socially and on the job. Not just men in one city or town, but 7,578 men in 31 cities all over America were asked, what advantages do you consider most important in a hair tonic? The results show that one hair tonic, Wild Root Cream Oil, gives men exactly what they're looking for. Because Wild Root Cream Oil does all three jobs that hair tonic users voted most important. One, Wild Root Cream Oil grooms your hair neatly and naturally, never leaves it sticky or greasy. Two, Wild Root Cream Oil relieves annoying dryness. And three, it removes loose, ugly dandruff. Yes, those are the things that men want a hair tonic to do, and Wild Root Cream Oil does all three. What's more... Wild Root Cream Oil gives you other advantages, which, as our survey shows, men definitely appreciate. There's not a drop of alcohol in Wild Root Cream Oil. And it's the only leading hair tonic that contains soothing lanolin. So ask for Wild Root Cream Oil. And remember, according to a recent nationwide survey, there are three jobs that men want a hair tonic to do. And Wild Root Cream Oil does all three. Now back to our dark venture for tonight. The only inhabitant. During the next few days, while we got ready for the trip to Harala, I learned a little about this strange old duck who lived out here in the middle of nowhere. His name was Henry Gordon. He was an Englishman, but he'd spent the last 30 years here in China. When he said he was going to destroy me, I wanted to laugh in his face. A little runt with only one arm who didn't weigh a hundred pounds. Just the same, I wasn't going to take any chances. And when we started our long hike, I kept him ahead of me all the time. And that night when we made camp, he began to understand that he wasn't dealing with any dope. How's the food coming? It's almost ready. How far would you say we traveled today? Oh, perhaps ten kilometers. Kilometers? <laughs> How come you talk so good? I was educated at Cambridge. Why did you become a hermit? Here's your food. Okay, hey, except... Wait a second. Don't go away. Huh? Sit down. You must think I'm a pretty dumb guy. I don't understand. I ain't forgotten you promised to destroy me. Well, one good way would be to poison my food. Well, the food is not poison. Just to make sure you eat from this plate first. But I... Look, when I say something, don't argue with me. You eat from this plate first. All right, if you wish. Yeah, I wish. And here's something else you better know, Pally... In case you figure on waiting until I fall asleep and then beating it. In case you figure that's your way to get me, you can forget about that, too. You see this belt? While we sleep, I'm tying you to me. We're going to be real close, you and I. I see. Yeah. I'm playing it smart, Pally. After that, he didn't try nothing. But I started having another worry. Every day we hiked a few miles farther through the wilderness. But even after a week, it didn't seem like we were getting anywhere. Then I started thinking maybe this guy was taking me around in circles. Maybe that's how he figured on destroying me. Hey, Pally. Yes? Stop for a minute. I want to talk to you. 
Well? How long do you figure we'll have to hike through this wild country to get to Harala? Oh, three months, ten months, who can say? <gasps> oh! From now on, every time you give me one of them phony answers, you're going to get smacked like that. Now, how many days? If we maintain our present rate, we should be within sight of Harala in 90 days. However, I assure you, it won't do you a bit of good now. Still going to destroy me, huh? Okay, if it makes you happy to think so, it's no skin off my nose. But I want you to know one thing, Pally. Don't try to lead me around in circles. You needn't worry about that. Oh, I ain't worried. Because beginning the day, I'm going to start counting days. And when I reach 90, if we ain't within sight of Harala, guess what's going to happen to you? <laughs> I guess the old guy was on the up and up. Because on the 87th day, I stopped counting. There it is. There on the horizon. There's your harala. Yeah, so that's it. It don't look like much. You'll find it's what you want. A hideaway for evil men. <laughs> yeah, good. And uh, what about your threat? Guess you don't make good on it after all, Polly. I'm satisfied. And now that I've taken you this far... I'll go back to my own home. Uh, you look pretty weak. And with that arm of yours, uh, you think you could make it? I think so. I don't. I don't think you could make it in a million years, Pally. Besides, I can't really let you go back because there's just a chance that someday somebody else may come along and you tell about me. So I'm going to give you a great big break. A what? This. <laughs> who destroyed who? Pally. I guess I just about ran the rest of the way to Harala. But it sure wasn't nothing for a picture postcard. A stinking little town with dark wooden houses all crowded together. Oh, I didn't care about that. That'd be a hideout. Nobody'd ever find me in a million years. That's all that mattered. When I got here, it was already night. But I found the bar room quick enough. It was pretty crowded. Not with Chinese, but with white guys. Every one of them probably in the same boat as me. I went in to get a drink and maybe find out where I could get a room. Hey, bartender, you savvy American? Sure. Why not? What's you go? Hey! What's the matter? Get out of here! Huh? What are you talking about? Get out of here right away! Get out or I'll kill you! I never saw a guy scared like that before. Not even guys I'd knocked off. I got out of there all right. The shock of him acting like that kind of threw me. But after a while, I, I started figuring maybe he was drunk or something. And I started looking for someplace else. I found what looked like a little hotel. I went in. The clerk, a Chinese guy, was drowsing at the desk. Come on, wake up. I want a room. Wake up. A room, I want a room. A room, yes. Oh! Hey, get out, get out. Hey, get out, get out. Hey, what's wrong? Hey, Stop get pushing out. me. Hey, get out, get out. Hey, what's the matter with you? Let me in. What's wrong? That's what I ran into when I first came to Harala. And it's been like that ever since. I've been going nuts. What's wrong with this town? Why don't nobody help me? Someone told me to see you, that you're some kind of wise man. Okay, tell me what's wrong, wise man. Tell me what's wrong, or sir. Help me, I'll kill you too. I told you I would explain, and I shall. But after I have explained, my advice is that you take the gun and turn it on yourself. What are you talking about? This town will never shelter you nor will any other town in all China. But why? Why? Because Henry Gordon was right. He did destroy you. You're crazy. When I got what I wanted out of him, I killed him. You killed him too late. Why do you suppose he was so crippled? Look, look, I don't get it. Why do you suppose everyone in Harala runs away from you when they see your face? What are you talking about? Because on your face, 
they see the evidence. So you made him sample your food. So you kept him by your side the entire journey. <laughs> How very clever of you. Yes, the weakest man of all destroyed you, my friend. Why do you suppose Henry Gordon was the only inhabitant of that valley? Because he had what he gave you, leprosy. <laughs> Dark Venture is written by Larry Marcus and directed by Leonard Rieg. Next week at the same time, the Wild Root Company, makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the Hair, will bring you another original story from the Land of the Shadows. And now, Harry Wallstrom warns the men in our audience about smart girls. Men, it's true. A smart girl knows that a man with sloppy-looking hair is likely to be sloppy about other things, too. So, show her how neat you are, how handsome you can look. Groom your hair with non-alcoholic Wild Root Cream Oil. As a recent nationwide survey shows, Wild Root Cream Oil does all three jobs that men consider most important. It grooms your hair naturally, it relieves annoying dryness, and it removes embarrassing loose dandruff. What's more... Non-alcoholic wild root cream oil contains lanolin, the soothing oil that's so much like the oil of your own skin. No wonder four out of five users from coast to coast preferred wild root cream oil to all other hair tonics they'd tried before. You'll like wild root cream oil, too. So take Wild Root's FN test. Check your scalp. Dryness or loose dandruff tells you you need wild root cream oil right away. Tonight's dark venture, William Tracy was heard as Eddie. The others in the cast were Alec Harford, Norman Field, Peter Chong, and Jack Moyles. Original music by Dean Fosler. Your narrator has been John Lake. William Tracy may soon be seen in the Hal Roach production, Here Comes Trouble. Until next Tuesday, remember... Smart girls use Wild Root Cream Oil, too, for quick, good grooming and to relieve dryness between permanents. Mothers say it's great for training children's hair. of mortal men come many shadows, shadows of greed and hate, jealousy and fear. Darkness is the absence of light. So in the sudden shadows which fog the minds of men and women are to be found the strange impulses which urge them into the unknown. Dark Venture came to you from Hollywood. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.